Um, well, that's nothing new, right? There are plenty of, it's, it's always one of these things where um, I'm always struck by the fact that, uh, you know, people are asking about how language affects the way one thinks about things. I think some of these memes are good examples of how one can end up in a situation where it's like, I don't know what you're talking about. Um, you know, that thing is sick. Okay. You know, I thought I knew the meaning of the word sick, but I know now it has a new meaning and that, you know, but I have to be able to translate that. In what context can I translate in what way? You know, in a sense, language, the, the big thing about language is it allows sort of people to communicate with other people. But by the time, you know, when, when you develop these memes, which one group of people knows about, another group of people doesn't, don't know about, that, that sort of is, is the, perhaps it's the beginning of a new piece of language, but it's also a way that people don't understand what other people are talking about. Same thing happens in fields of science where somebody will have jargon in one area, and sometimes the jargon in one area will collide with the jargon in another area. And you'll be talking about um, the, uh, uh, well, for example, our, we have this thing in, in our physics theory called branchial space. Branchial space in American, perhaps. Um, branch, like branches of a tree. Branchial space. Well, it turns out that uh, one of the good things about the word branchial is that it doesn't get tagged by spell correctors, even though they haven't heard about our theory of physics. Because the word branchial also shows up as a type of bone in a fish. So this is a typical example of, you know, one person's talking about branchial space in the physics project, another people's talk person's talking about it in fish anatomy, and you don't know what you end up talking about. Um, and I think that the, uh, um, it's um, uh, uh, somehow these, these um, the thing that really gets to me, I suppose, is, is these word fashions that last such a short time. And, and you can kind of see that if you look in, and like in Wolfram language, we have some of these word frequency data things, and you'll see these particular words like the word groovy from the 1960s. Um, you know, had this very short lived period when it was uh, a cool, groovy, whatever word. Um, and, uh, you know, I think that's a, it's a, um, well, the question for an old fogey like me is, is uh, how quickly do you learn these things? And then do you only learn them after they already went out of style? Um, and I'm afraid I'm probably one of those people who often learns these things only after they've gone out of style. But um, so I haven't learnt what this, um, uh, this particular meme um, is about. I suppose an, an interesting question is whether um, if you, um, uh, to what extent, gosh, I remember the chap who invented the term meme a chap called Richard Dawkins. I remember, I don't think I've seen him since the 1970s, when he was just starting to think about things like that term meme. I'm not sure whether the thing he thought of as meme is really the thing that has turned into the memes that we talk about today. His, his idea was it's kind of just like genes in, in natural selection and biology sort of communicate attributes of an organism to successive generations. Memes communicate sort of fragments of thoughts to, to successive uh, groups of people. Um, anyway, I think I, the, um, uh, okay, so, so the summary of this YouTube video is, the reporter in this video asks a kid a question and he says, I like turtles at the 10 second mark. Okay, I completely don't get this. Um, and uh, okay, that's that's um, that's good. I, I, you know, one of the things that is sort of interesting in my in my line of work, I suppose, is that uh, it's a, you know, I've learned a lot of things in my life, and the um, the thing that is always notable is that every day I'm dealing with things that I don't know about. Every day it's like, oh my gosh, how does this work? I have to try to learn this. How does it, you know, what what's going on, etc., etc., etc. And I think. Uh, you know, I, I think a lot of people don't imagine that's that the way that, you know, they, they imagine, okay, you go to school, you learn a bunch of stuff, and then you're set. You don't have to learn anymore. Um, certainly for me, that is not the way it's worked. And it's not the way that I like it to work. And, you know, for example, I've, I've just recently, last few days, I've been trying to piece together some aspects of the history of mathematical logic. I thought I understood that reasonably well. But I look at a bunch of papers and it's like, oh my gosh, I didn't realize this thing, that doesn't make sense. Uh, you know, that couldn't possibly have, have, have come from this. You know, how does that work? Et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. What is this 
weird technical thing that I thought I understood, but I obviously don't understand it. What does it mean? And, uh, you know, I think it's a very, um, uh, it's really a very worthwhile thing to kind of, uh, you know, keep learning stuff. The other, the other big question, which is important when you try to make decisions on the basis of things you learned, is do I actually understand that? Do I know what I understand or do I think I understand what I don't really understand? And, you know, in, in what I do for a living of computational language design, it's kind of important to, to know when you really understand. Because if you're going to do something where you say, this is how our computational language is going to work, um, you know, we've maintained compatibility now across a third of a century in our language. And so it's like, if we put something in today, we better not make a mistake because we're going to be stuck with it forever. And so for, it's then rather important to know when you know what you're talking about. And um, I think something that I've learned over the years is, you know, what does it feel like when I kind of know that I know what I'm talking about versus what does it feel like when I'm still like a little bit uncertain of, you know, I don't know what this is about. I don't know what's going on. Um, and, uh, you know, can you distinguish those two things? And, um, you know, I think sometimes, uh, sometimes in the modern education system, people are rushing so much, you know, write another essay, write another thing, do this test, do it to time, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, that people don't get used to this feeling of, yes, I really understand, you know, I really understand what's going on. There's real sort of, you know, the foundations are on bedrock and, uh, you know, whatever you tell me about this thing, if you tell me something different, I'm not going to be confused because I really understand this. And people don't always get to that point. And I think that's a, a really useful point to get to. And it's also really useful to know when you've got to that point and when you're still kind of floating around on sand and where something could come along where it's like, oh, I don't understand that. Um, you know, that's important when you're trying to make these kind of intellectual or technical decisions of, uh, you know, should we really do it this way or that way? Well, I really understand. I'm really confident this way is going to work. Or I don't really understand. I'm not sure. I don't know whether it should be this way or that way. Let's try and find something where we don't have to commit to it being this way or that way. Um, the uh, okay. So so someone's commenting about this about this mystery meme. Um, uh, that I get the meme because I'm laughing. That it makes no sense.